Hello my friends, welcome to Prime Strings. I'm Henriette and today we are learning to play Copycat, which is number 11 in the Fiddle Time Joggers book. Now when we learn Copycat, what's new today is that we are going to be using our left hand fingers. And we've never done that before, so it would be lovely to do this together. Now before we can get into the right shape with our left hand, I suggest you write a little finger line on your finger just where your index finger joins your hand. You can see I'm just writing a little line on my finger there. So if you haven't already got one near you, grab a pen and just write that little line because that is very useful when we learn to play our fingers. So let's grab the violin now and I'll show you what to do with that line. Now this line is what I call my finger line and my finger line comes next to the E string and I've drawn that finger line on my hand so that I know that that crease where my index finger joins onto my hand is right by the side of the E string and you perhaps see that right here it's right next to the E string you see what we want to avoid and that's why we have the line is that your hand is way too low here so your fingers are so high up above the fingerboard so that they stick all the way above the fingerboard and you can just see the line there which indicates that the whole of my index finger is up above the fingerboard. So once you've got that finger line in place let's have a look at your thumb and your thumb should be just peeking over the edge like that and it shouldn't be leaning back or be too far up it should be about there. So I'm here about just over one centimetre from the edge of the fingerboard there. Now I want to make sure that I push my wrist out a little bit because I want to have, with my hand, I want to have a shape as if I have a tennis ball in my hand like that. So if I got it like that with my violin there, you can see that my finger line's level with the E string. My thumb is just up there. And my wrist is pushed out so that I can fit that tennis ball in my hand. So have an imaginary tennis ball right here. Uh, so you've got this sort of claw-like shape with your hand. And you can see the angle of my wrist. So it's not like that at all. You push it out so that your fingers come closer to the strings. You can see the difference. If I play like this, my fingers are away from the strings. And now, now I move into that sort of claw-like shape my fingers are pointing towards the strings and that's where we need them. Now, uh, lift up your index finger straight up into the air and we're going to practice that one because today we are practicing just your index finger. Make sure that is your first finger here. Okay, and let's place it on the A string. And you need to be about a centimeter away from the beginning of the string right there. Okay, so let's try that. Let's move your finger up and down and up and down and all that time your other fingers are sort of hovering above the strings so if this is you see if you can get your fingers a little bit higher and your other fingers are just up as well above the fingerboard so let's practice that a few more times up and down and up and down now for most people that's really tiring to do so if that's you that's okay lots of people find that very very hard work so if your elbow or your shoulder is getting tired, just give it a little swing there so you can relax it again. And then we'll try it one more time. And very soon you'll build up stamina and you think nothing of it anymore. So here we go again. Check over your finger line. Check over your thumb. Check over that tennis ball shape of your hand. Now let's do the same exercise again, but this time we'll do it slightly differently. And we're going to come down on the D string with our index finger. So lift your first finger up into the air. Make sure this is actually your index finger, your pointy finger. Some people want to use their second finger, but don't, please don't. So index finger it is. Place it on the D string. And again, you're about a centimeter away from the beginning of the string there. And up and down. And up and down. And make sure you hover your other fingers so that they're not there, but they're up above the string. Let's do it a few more times. Up and down. And up and down. Now, let's place your 
index finger now on the A string. And now let's get the bow and let's play that and, and hear what that sounds like. So here we go. Let's play that. This note's called B, by the way. It's the first finger on A and we'll, the notes go like the alphabet. So A, my first finger is called B. And here we go. And lift up. that in the first instance I'm not too worried about what that note sounds like I'm worried about the shape of your hand and the movement that you make here with your fingers but very soon you'll think okay sometimes I play a slightly different note so let's see if I can play a B in tune <laughs> of times you can try and put your finger down in the same place all the time now I think it's time for a little swing of the arm okay so we come back to that relaxed state all the time and this time once your arm is rested a little bit we're going to have a go at practicing this finger on the D string now we know that on the A string my first finger was called B A B the beginning of the alphabet on the D string, your first finger is again the next letter in the alphabet, is called E. Now, you might say, but we've got an E already. Yes, we've got a high E, which is your E string. And this is a lower E, the E first finger on the D string. So, let's get your hand in place. Let's check over your finger line. Let's check over your thumb. Let's check over your tennis ball. And now, let's place the first finger on the D string. And here we go, and lift up, finger, lift up, okay, very good, very nice. So let's see if we can start playing the same finger all the time, shall we? Uh, we're starting on D this time. starting on A and replacing our first finger on the A string. Lovely. Now if you feel your nail on the string, you should try to cut your nail a little bit shorter because when I play on the string, I'm meant to play on the cushiony bit on the skin rather than on the nail of your finger so if your nail is a bit longer then see if you can cut it so that you will you will have your finger on the string but not your nail okay now let's have a look at our piece now uh, we're learning copycat number 11 in fiddle time joggers and when you look at this piece um, it is a duet for two violins now one of the lines is marked with a little star and that is your line that you are playing so you always play the top line of the system of two lines so you pick the top because your colleague or maybe your teacher or maybe your cd that you've got that plays the bottom line okay so you start with a whole load of rests and if you have a close look at those rests at the start of your piece they are hanging off the top of the line so that can mean a whole bar rest which it means in this case or it can mean four beats rest now that in this piece it is the same you, you can perhaps remember our last piece when we were playing in three four time that was a whole bar rest that hanging line uh, and it meant three beats but here a whole bar rest equals four beats now if that is confusing to you forget about it uh, we'll come to talk about it another day uh, but in this piece is not the most important thing for you to remember. So uh, let's move along to the end of the first line and that's where your notes start. 
Now you've got two Ds and then you've got those two E's that you play one finger on the D string. So let's start there. Let's get our finger line in place and our thumb and our tennis ball. So your hand is nicely in shape before you start. And now let's put the bow down on the D string at the heel of the bow. And we're going to play short bows up to the middle of the four. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. My finger stays on the string all the time. Can you see? Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to skip all those rests and we're going to go to the end of line three. And this time you can see it's A, A, B, B. So we're playing on the A string with our index finger. Three, four. Rest. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. the whole song one more time. You've remembered uh, when I play bar five and six of course there are rests aren't they but my finger stays on the string because I need it again just after the rests you see. So we're going from the beginning but I'm not counting us in for all those bars we're going on to where you start playing the end of line one. So let's have your finger line your thumb and your tennis ball all in place. Let's put your bow to the string and after four off we go. One, two, three, four. Rest. Leave your finger on the string. Two, three, four. Get your finger ready above the A string. Three, four. Leave that finger on the string. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. practice. So there are a number of things that we've covered so far. So first of all you always want to take your time to check your left hand position. If your left hand position is off then you're much less likely to play in tune. So that's why we focus so much effort on having the right left hand position so that you're much more likely to play in tune and that you take everything one step at a time. And that is good progress and you find whilst we'll invest a little bit more time at this stage it will save you a lot of time later because fixing tuning is much more time consuming than getting it right right from the beginning. You also have noticed that whilst we play two bars rest or three bars rest um, when you go onto the A string I leave my finger on the string and you're just waiting you're just going to go through the counting uh, and your finger stays in the same place. Now you can actually prepare in your head how you're going to bow those notes. So once you you have left your fingers there and you can actually think and prepare your bowing and make them 
make the notes sound much more smooth when you play. So it's not that during rest we're not doing anything, you're actually preparing for what's coming up. Shall we play the whole song once again now for an end of this lesson? And I would like you to count with me all those bars. So we're now going to get started with our counting right from the right from the beginning. So before we start, I'm going to check my finger line. I'm going to check my left thumb. I'm going to check my tennis ball. Okay, and I'm going to get ready on the D string with my bow. After four, one, two, three, four, one two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, leave your stuff on the string, your bow, four, one, and also your left hand, three, four. preparing all the time during the rest so I keep counting my head one two and so on uh, but I'm thinking about what's coming up next and that exercise is a very useful one because it gets you into a mindset that rests aren't really <laughs> relaxation time they are very useful those rests for you to prepare what's coming up next and that aspect Getting used to that as aspect will save you a lot of time later on. So be patient at this stage and your quick progress, I'm sure, will come. I look forward to seeing you again in Lesson 12 where we play Tap Dancer. But for now, if you've got any questions or comments, please do write them in the comment section below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel or shared it with your friends, do please do so now. Thank you so much. That's much appreciated. Goodbye.